Heart disease is still the number one killer around the world. It takes millions of lives every year. Most of us think our medications are keeping us safer, but there's something many people never hear about. Some of the pills meant to protect you could actually be working against your hearts. A major study from USC followed older adults and found something surprising. Half of all seniors were taking at least one medication that can affect the hearts. 12% were taking two at the same time. 6% were taking three or more. And when that happened, the risk of heart attack, stroke, or even death didn't just add up. It shot up two to three times higher. So in this video, we are going to look at five common types of medications that may be putting your heart in danger, even if they seem routine or harmless. You will learn which everyday pills have hidden heart risks and the questions you should ask your doctor before your next visit. You will also see why taking several medications together creates a multiplier effect that can greatly increase your risk. Stick around and take note of the conversation scripts. They will give you the exact words you can use to talk with your healthcare team and keep yourself safer. You grab ibuprofen when your back hurts. You keep naproxen in the cabinet for arthritis flare-ups. You might even take meloxicam every day because it was prescribed years ago. These medications feel harmless because they're so common, but NSAIDs come with FDA black box warnings for serious heart problems. They can raise your blood pressure, cause your body to hold onto fluid, stress your kidneys, and increase your chance of a heart attack or stroke by 15 to 44 percent. And here is something many people don't know. Not all NSAIDs carry the same level of danger. Meloxicam can almost double the cardiovascular risk compared to ibuprofen. If you are over 60 or already have heart failure, high blood pressure, or kidney disease, your risk climbs even higher. The good news is that you can make safer choices. You can talk to your doctor about using acetaminophen instead because it does not have the same heart risks. You can also try topical NSAIDs, like creams and gels, that do not enter the bloodstream as strongly or you can use the lowest possible dose for the shortest amount of time. There is another benefit people often miss. Cutting back on NSAIDs helps your kidneys. And when your kidneys are healthier, your heart is healthier too. These two organs work closely together, so protecting one protects the other. Think about how often you reach for these pain relievers. Are you treating an occasional ache? Or are you masking a deeper problem that needs a different solution? And pain relief is only the beginning. The next medication type is something many people take every morning without even thinking about it. Omeprazole, Pantoprazole, Lansoprazole. These proton pump inhibitors are some of the most commonly prescribed medications in the world. People take them for heartburn, acid reflux, or to protect their stomach from other medications. Your doctor may have put you on one years ago, and you might still be taking it every day without thinking about it. But long-term use of PPI creates two hidden heart risks. The first problem is magnesium loss. PPI slowly lower your magnesium levels. And when magnesium drops too low, your heart rhythm can become irregular. That can lead to palpitations, dizziness, or something more serious. The second problem is interference with clopidogrel, also known as Plavix. If you take Plavix after a heart attack or a stent, your PPI may be weakening the protection that medication is supposed to give your heart. Research shows that many people stay on PPI much longer than they actually need to. The original stomach issue goes away, but the medication keeps getting refilled and no one checks if it is still necessary. Here is what you gain by reviewing your PPI use. You may find that you no longer need it every day. You might only need it during flare-ups. Or you may be able to manage symptoms with simple changes like eating smaller meals, avoiding trigger foods, and staying upright after eating. There is also a bonus benefit. Cutting back on unnecessary PPI use lowers your risk of bone fractures, infections, and nutrient deficiencies. These issues are not directly related to your heart, but they still affect your long-term health. So ask yourself, when was the last time your doctor checked whether you still need this medication? And now let's move to the next medication class. It is even trickier because it is sold over the counter and marketed as safe for almost everyone. Pseudoephedrine and phenylephrine show up in almost every cold and flu medicine on the shelf. You reach for them when you're stuffed up and miserable. 
They work by tightening blood vessels in your nose, but they also tighten blood vessels throughout your body. That means higher blood pressure, a faster heart rate, and a greater chance of palpitations or irregular rhythms. If you already have high blood pressure, heart rhythm problems, or a history of heart attack or stroke, these decongestants can be genuinely risky. Studies confirm this. Older adults with heart issues who use decongestants face much higher chances of sudden cardiovascular events. Yet many people assume over-the-counter automatically means safe. Here's the good news. You can clear congestion without stressing your heart. Saline sprays have no systemic effects. Steam, humidifiers, and menthol rubs open airways naturally. Warm fluids and rest also help more than most people realize. Another plus is better sleep. Decongestant stimulants can keep you awake when your body needs downtime to recover. So next time you're in the cold medicine aisle, flip the box over. If you see pseudoephedrine or phenylephrine, put it back. And now let's move to another long-standing medication class that many people still take, even though safer options exist. Amitriptyline and imipramine are older tricyclic antidepressants from the 1950s and 60s. They are no longer the first choice for depression, but many doctors still use them for nerve pain, migraines, and sleep issues. The problem is that tricyclics carry heart risks that newer antidepressants do not. They can cause a sudden drop in blood pressure when you stand up, leading to dizziness or even fainting. They also speed up your heart rate and can disrupt your heart rhythm. These effects hit older adults even harder. As we age, the heart's electrical system slows down, and medications that were once tolerable can become dangerous. So if you are taking a tricyclic antidepressant, ask your doctor whether a newer medications could treat your symptoms with fewer risks, ask if you need an ECG or regular heart checks, and ask whether you can slowly switch to a safer option. There is an added benefit. Newer antidepressants usually cause fewer side effects, like dry mouth, constipation, and weight gain. You protect your heart and feel better overall. How long has it been since you reviewed whether your current antidepressant is still the right one? And now we reach the final medication on the list. One that may surprise you because millions of people take it every day, believing it only protects their health. You've probably been told to take calcium for strong bones. It sounds like common sense, but high-dose calcium supplements, not calcium from food, have been linked to a small increase in heart attack risk. Researchers think large concentrated doses may briefly spike blood calcium and encourage artery buildup or clotting. Here's the key point. Calcium from food does not show this risk because your body absorbs it slowly. Supplements hit your system all at once. Whether you should take calcium depends on your actual bone health and diet. If you have low bone density and don't get enough calcium from food, a supplement may help. But taking high dose calcium just in case may add heart risk without real benefit. So ask your doctor if your diet already provides enough calcium and have them calculate it based on what you eat. If you do need a supplement, use the lowest effective dose and review your heart and bone health together. And remember, Food-based calcium brings bonus nutrients like vitamin D, protein, magnesium, and vitamin K. It supports your whole body, not just your bones. Before you reach for a supplement, ask yourself if you truly need it or if you're taking it out of habit. Here's the part that ties everything together and shows why this is so urgent. Taking just one of these medications raises your heart risk by about 21%. That's serious, but still something you can manage. Taking two at the same time raises your risk by 89%. And taking three or more pushes your risk up by more than 120%. This isn't a simple add-on effect. It multiplies. Researchers found the highest danger when opioids were combined with NSAIDs, antidepressants, or bronchodilators. Those combinations created two to three times the risk seen with other medication pairs. And here's what surprised the experts. Even people taking statins to protect their hearts still showed the same rising risk when these other medications were added. In other words, you can be on a heart protective drug and still end up with higher overall risk if your full medication list isn't reviewed. So what does this mean for you? 
It means every pill you take needs to make sense not only by itself, but also alongside everything else in your routine. Here's exactly what to do next. Start by writing down every medication you take. Include prescriptions, over-the-counter drugs, vitamins, herbal products, pain relievers, cold medicines, and reflux medications. Everything goes on the list. Next, highlight the five categories we covered in this video. NSAIDs, proton pump inhibitors, decongestants, tricyclic antidepressants, and high-dose calcium supplements. Then call your doctor or pharmacist and schedule a medication safety review. When you're in the room, use this simple line. Doctor, I've learned that several common medications can affect heart health. Are the ones I'm taking still the safest choices for me at my age and with my health history? After that, go through each higher risk medication one at a time. For NSAIDs, ask about acetaminophen or topical options. For PPIs, ask if you still need them daily or only during flare-ups. For decongestants, ask about saline sprays and non-drug alternatives. For tricyclic antidepressants, ask about newer medications with fewer heart risks. For calcium supplements, ask whether your diet already provides enough. This is not about stopping any medication on your own. Never do that without medical guidance. This is about having a clearer, more informed conversation with your healthcare team. Many of these medications have real benefits. The goal is smart decision making, not avoiding everything. If this video opened your eyes to risks you didn't know about, share it with a parent, grandparent, or friend who takes several medications each day. It could truly help protect their health. And be sure to watch our video on another widely used supplement, melatonin every night. This new warning is shocking. You'll learn which supplements actually work, which ones to be cautious with. If you found this helpful, remember to like this video subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss our future content.